I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play some of the parts from the song Free Ride by Edgar Winter Group. This song includes some great examples of using chord shapes derived from the guitar cage system. It also has some sixth intervals, and it's got some uh, syncopated 16th note strumming. This lesson is suitable for intermediate level players on up who are already familiar with standard bar chords and strum patterns. You can follow along with free guitar tablature. To get it, just go to the link in the video description. Before we get started on the parts, let me give you a quick rundown of my setup. Um, I am playing a uh, Bluesman Vintage Strat style guitar. It's got some Seymour Duncan antiquity surfer pickups in it and I'm playing through this little Fender Pro Junior amp but I'm not using the speaker on it I'm actually plugged into this Rivera Silent Sister isolation cabinet I've got a Celestion Vintage 30 in there and then I've added some reverb at the board so here's my sound I've got the guitar in position two here with the bridge and middle pickups on giving it that uh, quacky strat sound. Here's the intro slowed down a little bit. All right, so with the sheet music in front of you, let's get started. We're going to start with the intro. I've got the music in front of me here. The first thing I want to point out is that if you read music, you notice that you have a key signature for D major, yet the primary chord in this song uh, is A. So you have some, uh, you have a mode going on. This is an A mixolydian mode. You're focusing on the fifth degree of the uh, of the D major scale, but most of the notes and chords are drawn. Uh, they are drawn from the D major scale uh, in this A mixolydian mode. So. I decided to use a D major key signature there. There are some accidentals that come up later. I'll talk about that um, when they come up. So before we actually play the the, uh, the intro as it's played in the song, let me explain where what this chord progression is and where these chords come from. So you could just look at the um, at the chord names above the notation. And notice that you have the chords A G D followed by G D A. So that's the basic uh, um, that's the basic progression, but we're going to use some somewhat unconventional chord shapes, or at least these chord shapes are not uh, your standard chord shapes. Um, you're actually going to come come up here. So instead of playing um, A, G, D down here, you're going to use C form bar chords like this. So there's A at the twelfth fret of the fifth string. There's your pinky on it. This is the C form bar chord. A. There's G, and then there's D. You could think of that as stemming from an A form bar chord or from a G form bar chord. Either one. These shapes are part of the cage system. I teach the cage system at length in my uh, in my video instruction that's available on my website. I'm not going to get into the details of it here. This lesson is actually just meant to be an example of how you would use the cage system to play a familiar song. So back to our changes here. You've got A, G, D, and then you're going to play G, D, A. And play A down there like that. Okay, I'm kind of getting you to the part step by step. So the next thing you want to do is take your pinky out of it so you're actually not going to play the roots on the fifth string. You're going to play A, G, D, and then G, D, A. All right, so now let's take a look at the tab and let's put this together um, exactly as I uh, played it. 
which is uh, fairly close to the original recording. When you follow that link to uh, my website, I'll give you some uh, links if you want to look at the actual complete official uh, tablature. So this is kind of my own condensed version. Uh, the first thing you want to notice is that you have some pickup notes like this. <laughs> And you could think of these notes as um, relating to a D chord here. You're playing a little bit of the second, major third, and then there's the fifth and the octave. You might even think of, think of it uh, as coming out of the D major pentatonic. And uh, those pickup notes come on beat four. So if you're counting off this song, you have one, two, three, four, and then on beat one of the next measure, you have A, which is up here in C form, and you actually pick it uh, a whole step lower. You pick it as G, and you slide up into it like this. So it's... And then from here, you have some 16th note strumming, so... Uh, And then you're going to come back down to G and down to D. So all together, it's one, two, three, four. Whoops. Let me do that again. One, two, three, four. Um, after this, you have some just muted strumming. Down, up, down, up. Um, just lightly hold the strings so they're muted. Play that little uh, lick at the beginning again. Now we're getting into uh, measure two, and this is G, D, to A, but you're going to hammer into the G. So instead of going straight to it like this, you're actually going to start by picking part of that D and hammering in to that C form G chord. And this is, this is a very common way to use a, uh, a C form chord like this to go back and forth between it and this type of chord shape and often to hammer on. So we have a little bit of that going on here. So uh, right at the beat, let me back up. Beat four of measure one. Beat one of measure two is... Again, that's 16th notes there. Let me back up from the beginning. So you got one, two, three, four. And then it just repeats. Again, this is a great example of how you can take what are otherwise standard bar chords, A, G, D, standard chords, and instead of just playing them in the most predictable manner, use a slightly different chord shape, which will produce a slightly different voicing, which just gives it a, a, a more, uh, gives it a unique sound. So we're using the C form, we're really, this part really highlights uh, the C form bar chord there. All right, next we're going to take a look at the verse, which starts at measure three in the free tab. Let me slow it down for you a little bit. It sounds like this. Okay, we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got, you know, some syncopation. That is, we have some accents on some uh, kind of unpredictable, uh, irregular beats here. And we also have uh, a little bit of um, some accidentals, some notes that fall outside of the key signature. You could think of this as modal interchange a little bit. So the target chord here is A, and you uh, kind of approach it with a D, a C, and then A. And I'm playing those just as power chords. So it's that C chord that's kind of out of the key signature. But um, C, w C is a minor third of A, and it's really common in blues-influenced rock music 
to play in a, a major key, but uh, work in some of that minor third. So think about, you know, st stuff like. So we're in A mixolydian mode, which has, you know, A and the flat 7G and a four chord. And it's not uncommon for players to put in a, this would, if you're counting from A, this would be a, a flat three chord. So um, again, out of the key signature, but uh, you could think of it as being borrowed from the minor key. You could think of it as just kind of a, a, a blues influenced um, chord change there. All right, so, so D, C, A, and uh, looks like I actually have it tabbed as full chords. You could play it as full bar chords, A-form bar chords, uh, or as uh, um, power chords. But let's talk about that rhythm. So the, the rhythm's a little tricky, okay? The D starts right on the downbeat, one. But then the C comes on the one E and a. Uh. So it's one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a. Uh. If you're strumming 16th notes, you would go down, up, down, up. This is considered syncopation. You, you have an accent. Um, whenever you have an accent on some kind of unpredictable uh, beat, that's that's considered a type of syncopation. If this was right on the beat, if it went or it'd be easy, very easy to follow. But it's it's right on the uh of one, and you're gonna you you probably should play that with an upstroke. And I actually put in a muted stroke, a downstroke, right before it. It just kind of helps that uh, C chord pop. It kind of helps me stay grounded to the pulse of the song and hit it on the right tempo. So I actually, I actually go. And we could finish this off, because on the very next downstroke, you play A. You might even put in some extra uh, muted strokes in between. You know, you might go if you want to do that. Uh, you can. So once again, I'm going down, up, down, up, and I put in a muted, muted stroke on the down stroke. So work it out however you want. Just make sure you're punching those chords in the right part of the beat. So you got. All right. So after once you get to A, you play A on the and of two. And then notice you have an arrest, and of three, rest, and of four. So altogether, that first measure is. Let me do it again. And if you keep strumming at the rate of sixteenth notes, those ands will be will be downstrokes. All right. Now we're going to move into the next measure. Uh, you're going to go from this A chord to a D and C form. So here we're making use of that C form shape again. You're not going to use your pinky here. You're just going to play this much of it. You're going to hammer on into it like you did up here earlier. Play some 16th notes and then go back to A. It sounds like this. And uh, I ended on the end of two there on A. And just like the measure before it, measure three, you play A again on the end of three and on the end of four. So measure four altogether is. Here's measure three. Then measure four. Let me put those together now. Notice that you play in the and of beat four, and then you immediately go right into the next measure. So here's both measures together. All right, next we're going to move on to the chorus. It begins at measure five. Let me play through it for you first, and I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Okay, so let's break this down. Uh, you're playing F sharp minor, 
uh, G, then you're going to A, then F sharp minor, G to D, and then F sharp minor, G to D, and you have a break there. So um, let's take a look at that strum pattern. You've got some eighth notes, you've got some sixteenth notes, there's some muted strokes. So looking at measure five, uh, you play it like this. So uh, you got some down. So if you're strumming at the rate of sixteenth notes, those eighth notes will all be down strokes. So it's so it's down, 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 and then down up on some muted strokes, and that gives you a little opportunity to move to the next chord shape. And measure six, you're going to play like a root and fifth for A and a root and sixth. You know, think about that type of rhythm uh, with some eighth notes and sixteenth notes. It sounds like this. You can think about that rhythm just repeating like this. But you may want to actually end that measure with some muted strokes because that gives you an opportunity to lift your fingers and position yourself for the next chord. So that's how I actually have it written. Muted strokes like this are very common, especially when you're playing kind of up-tempo, syncopated 16th note rhythms. They're, they're necessary in order for you to move your fingers and get to the next uh, chord shape in time. But they also add a nice kind of percussive uh, element that, give the, that gives the rhythm part a little bit more funk. So uh, looking again at measure six there, that's all down strokes except for where you have the 16th notes. Then you'll play the up stroke. So it's down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Or if you're going to mute at the end there. So measures five and six together. Whoops. Um, that was measures five and six. I want to head into seven, which is the same as five. Now you get to measure eight, which is the same as measure six. You play that, uh, that kind of uh, fifth and sixth rhythm, but instead of doing it for A, you do it for D. You could actually just play it here in the open position, just take the A part and move everything over a string. Or you could play it up here if you prefer to fret those notes, which is how I have it tabbed. You could put those muted strokes at the end too. You could have played the A up here as well. You could have gone. I just wanted to give you some options. It doesn't matter, either one. So F sharp minor, G to A, F sharp minor, G to D. Let me put it together for you. F sharp minor, G, and then you just end on a D chord uh, the third time. And that's right on beats one and beat two. Beat one is just a um, an eighth note, then you have a rest, so cut it off there. And then let it ring. Well, that wraps things up. I hope you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. If you would like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, the cage system, and more, then visit my website at guitar-music-theory.com. That's guitar music theory with dashes in between the words. When you get there, you can sign up to join my email list and preview some free materials. Well, thanks for watching. Please click like on this video and leave me some positive comments.